but you got to live by the Torah. You can't partial. That's right. So, oh, uh, the, but that's a good point that you're bringing up. Where are they getting this best of my ability? And they, you know, let's just keep 10% of the law. We doing well. What, what, where is that coming from? Does the Bible ever give that type of narrative, bro? Old Testament or New Testament? I think it's a misquoted verse out of Judges. Practicing righteousness is what they use, but that's not even what that text is talking about. Because we know that they wasn't practicing righteousness in the in uh, in judges, they were they were sinning. They got sent into captivity so many times; it's unreal. You talking about Judges chapter five, the song of Deborah? Well, wherever it is that they use this charity, you know, I'm talking about the one West use it. That's ones that try to uh, say, "Oh, we just practice in righteousness." Yeah, that's Judges chapter five, and that's that's the song of Deborah, and that ain't talking about that at all. Okay, that's yep. <laughs> That's Judges, um, Judges 5. But, you know, common sense ought to tell us that he's not talking about keeping the law like that, practicing. Why would God give a system and, and then shut it and then do away? And then uh, when they go into captivity, do away with that system. And then they allow them to receive the things that they're claiming in the wilderness. Why would God do that? If he had expected that thing to do 100%, why would he give uh, send them into captivity? If they're in captivity, they can't receive rest. They can't practice the law. I mean, Judaism itself had to start doing going with the rabbis because they couldn't do the things that they were supposed to do in the law, so they had to come up with other ways. Which and the temple's been gone. Temple's been gone for two thousand years, so Sherry. It ain't coming back until later. Agreed. Agreed. Now, here's the thing: the the ones, the Jews that reject Messiah. What kind of faith do they have? Or do they? They not? don't. They don't. That's the problem. They don't believe. Why do you think? Okay, remember. What do they use? They use, they go to uh, the Talmud for commentary. They don't take the scriptures and read them for as it says. They have to use the Talmud to decide what they need to do if such and such happens. They created their own system because the other system, the temple, is gone. So so was they faith? I mean, from what you're saying, it sounds like they had more faith in the temple than they did in God. Am I wrong for saying that? Well, what did Jesus say in Matthew 23 where he was talking about, what do you scribes and Pharisees? Is it the uh, is it the gift that you bring to the altar or is it the altar of yourself? See, so notice they're bringing the gift to the altar. Their works by their own hands, they're bringing to the altar. Oh, I keep Sabbath. I don't eat pork. I don't do this. I don't do that. It don't matter. You're still a sinner. God even told them that. He don't want no more offerings. Offerings is not just sacrifices. Offering is what you offer by your hands. Mm. It's not just necessarily sacrifice. That's the reason it says sacrifices and offerings. That's two different things. Mm. My Lord. So, Brother Brian, we know that Israel had the law for 1,500 plus years. Was it at any time that they had the law that these people had the law and faith? Or was it that they just had the law and no faith? Well, most of them had faith. That that knew that they couldn't. The law wasn't what they was going to be able to be. They wasn't going to be able to do all the law. And this little system they had didn't come about to later on. The system to where you have to walk around and dress like certain things 
yeah, they had things, but they wasn't like like they are now. It, it ain't a religious system. Back then, David, we know David committed adultery, but he still believed God. Yeah, and he even petitioned God when he sinned. Yeah. And I find it very interesting that, and I brought this up before, that look at this. Now you brought up David. David is in hot water. He done slept with this woman, Bathsheba. That is not his wife. She's somebody else's wife. So adultery, right? Which is, um, uh, I think, yeah, adultery, you were to be stoned to death. Okay. Uh, not only did David commit adultery, but he set a man up to be murdered. Okay. Uh, and third, he lied. He was lying all over the place. Right. Uh, and I'm sure that he probably did other things that, you know, maybe the Bible didn't speak on and some of the things the Bible did speak on. All right. So we got these three big crucial things here, right? David committed adultery. David lied and David even had a person murdered, right? Because he put Uriah on the front line. So yeah, he put his life, uh, jeopardized his life. Now, David tried to do his best to get up out of that, but of course he didn't, right? What ended up happening? God took away his child uh, or he, the child died. And But out of all of that, did David turn his face to the law or did David turn his face to God? He turned his face to God. And that's exactly the same example that we're supposed to do. No mm -hmm. matter how or as small the sin is, you know, or medium in between, whatever you want to say at this point, no matter what the sin is, you're supposed to turn your face to God because he's yep. the only one that can, what? Forgive you of your sins. He's the yep. only one that can wash away that sins. Now that's number one. Now, number two, and I'll move quickly on this. I want to take you over here. Right. And I can move quickly through uh, Blue Letter Bible. That's why I came back here. Uh, I believe it's in Mark chapter two. And I pointed this out to you before, but it was some time ago. Now, watch this. And God bless you, uh, Mama Millicent and uh, Reverend Sheldon. Welcome in uh, and to all those who are tuned in. Now, look at this. This is quite interesting. It says here. And again, he entered Capernaum. After some days, Brother Brian, and it was heard that he was in the house, talking about Jesus, immediately many gathered so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to, uh, to him, bringing a paralytic or paraplegic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed, which the paraplegic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, not their works, but he saw their faith faith. He said to the paraplegic, son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there because, you know, they always got to be there to spy out stuff. They're, and reasoning, they're, they're reasoning in their heart. And why does this man speak blasphemy like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Now, I want you to hold on to that question that they they ask because it's a truthful question that they ask. But this truthful question, which was supposed to go against Jesus, that's supposed to go against Christianity, actually really goes for us. And I'm going to show you why real quickly. But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paraplegic, your sins are forgiven you or say, arise and take up your bed and walk. But that 
you may know that the son of man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paraplegic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. And immediately he arose, took up his bed and went out in the presence of all of them so that all were amazed and glorified God saying, we never saw anything like this. This is what Jesus came to do. One of the things Jesus came to do is right there in his proclamation, by the way, which was prophesied in Isaiah 61, which Hebrew Israelites mistakenly or crazily say that's the gospel. No, it's one of the lists that Jesus is supposed to do. Now, why did you take us here, Cherry Love? Well, the first thing right here, uh, let's look at the men before we get to Jesus. They under the law. They got this sick man who's a paraplegic. He can't move. He's disabled, critically disabled. If the law is so powerful and can outdo anything, even your belief and faith in God, that why is it that these four men who are carrying this man, why they didn't take him to the temple where the law is being spoken? Why didn't they quote the law and the law do exactly what Jesus did? But here's the thing. The story tells you that these four men, and it's a crowd so thick that they can't even get to Jesus. All of these people are flocking to Christ. They ain't flocking to the temple, they flocking to Christ. And they see that there's no way to get to Jesus through the front door, the back door, through the window. They carry this man up to the rooftop Tear the roof off the house. You hear me, Reverend Sheldon? Tearing the roof off the house. Just to lower the man down before Christ. Who, who do they think that Jesus is? What do they know? That they know that they got to get this man to Christ. That's faith. They didn't take him to the priests. They didn't take him to the Sadducees or the uh, Pharisees. They didn't take him to the temple. They didn't take him nowhere. They bring him to Jesus. What did they know? Now, I'm going to leave that question for you to answer. You got that answer. Mm -hmm. You got that answer. Second thing. What did Jesus see by them doing this? Yeah, that it was a work to get up on top of the house. It was work to tear the roof off the house. It was work to find a way through the crowd. But did Jesus look at their work or was he looking at their faith? What does scripture say? Are you looking at their faith this year? Their you know, and you know what makes it so incredible? Because these people right here, this paralegic man, he basically was at, at the end. This is how Jesus saves a lot of people in the Bible. He puts them at their end of their rope. They can't go nowhere. They can't save themselves. They need and rely on Jesus. And that is the faith that they have. And that is what he had. That's all he had. What uh, when when Peter come up there and Peter was talking to Jesus, he says, and he and he bowed down to the ground and he says, "Depart from me, I am a sinner." Mm. Peter had no nothing. He knew he couldn't keep the law like he was supposed to. He knew that he was a sinner. Yeah. So even the guy that uh. Uh, when Jesus broke the Sabbath to help the guy out, 
The guy was at the end of his rope. He couldn't he couldn't get down in the water to be healed. He relied on Jesus, the leper. The leper didn't have a choice. He was outside the camp regardless. He walked around and screamed, leper, 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 all through the hills. He was not allowed inside the congregation. These are people outside the congregation. These are the people that definitely need God. The tax collector that knew that he was a worthless sinner. But you got these people out here that claim to be Hebrew Israelites that don't act like the characters in the Bible. That part. Ain't none of these characteristics in the Bible of anybody act like these Hebrews like none of them. They didn't on, act like them. Moses, Moses didn't act like them. Paul didn't act like them. Peter didn't act like them. When, when have you ever heard any of the any of them clowns out there talking about uh, uh, depart from me, uh, Lord? I'm a worthless sinner. And I think that I'm, I'm probably paraphrasing it. That's what Peter said. Depart right. from me. Then he told him, and this is what's so crazy. He told him help. His unbelief. Come on. So faith is not just some, you know, oh, I believe. No, it's the Holy Spirit coming in you. That's the help in your unbelief. Peter had unbelief. My God. That's what comforts us this year. The Holy Spirit's what comforts us in the time that shows us that we are saved and shows us the things that we need to do. But these people are worrying about the law. That's what I'm saying. But look at the direction of the people right here. With this man. Who is full of sickness in his body. If the law, Brother Brian, was just that strong, that powerful, on equal level with God, then why didn't no four men take this man, this sick man, yep. to where the law was being preached? Well, I mean, look, look, the, instead, instead of saying, whoa, wait a minute, is this the Messiah? What do they do? They condemn Jesus. He forgave sins. Are y'all going to ask him questions? Are you the one? Are you the Messiah? When are you going to ask the question? He's forgiven me for this man's sins. Peter said he was a sinner. This man said he was a sinner. The man that couldn't heal was a sinner. The man born blind, he was considered a sinner by the Pharisee. He was outcast. The yes. leper was a, yes. was a sinner. God, yes. Jesus came to these sinners. He didn't the come to these self-righteous the people. Blood. The woman with the issue yes, of she was, she was pushed out of the congregation. She My couldn't God. be a part of it. Jesus is saving the people that need it. My God. He's not saving these wicked people that, that think they're self-righteous. My God. My God. They went the right direction, but the world is telling you to go the wrong direction. You got Judaizers, self-righteous folk, uh, false doctrine, false cults, you name it, right? Y'all know the list is long. And they all telling you to go every direction, but the right direction. And the right direction is to go towards Christ. Your faith points you to Christ, not nothing yep. else. What the, oh. that's something yep. wrong when somebody tell you to go the yep. opposite way of Jesus. Yep. Bro, get this. Don't well, get your this. faith, your faith, which comes from God is going to draw you to Jesus. That's what it's supposed to do. Come on, These bro. people, but the problem is self-righteous people, what in Proverbs, what is the, what is, what is, the, what is pride? What, what does pride bring to people? Destruction. So, when it brings destruction, you see all these people running around here. Oh, oh, oh no, I'll keep the law. No, you don't. That's prideful. To say you keep the law is prideful. To say to say that you these wees the people. That's prideful. That's patting yourself on the back. My God. Uh, and this is this this is one of the reasons, and I keep telling people over and over and over and over again. Look, these people are not Israel. Stop telling them they're Israel. Because That's it's right. a pride. That is a pride situation. You're giving them pride. Why? I'm Israel. That's prideful. What did Jesus tell us to come up and become Israel before we can be saved? Okay. Or did he say, "Come, come, come, all you are heavy laden"? Why did Gentiles come to Jesus? 
because they realized they wasn't they wasn't chosen people. They needed God. They wanted to know who Jesus was. Amen. But these people, oh, we Israel. Who cares about Jesus? We Israel. Because that's what they're saying. Listen to them. How often do they ever talk about it? They'll talk about this Yeshua, wooshy, 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 but you don't hear much about him other than, oh, he just kept the law. And so I'm going to keep the law. So, you know what? I got what? Well, oh, man. I got something for you, but I got to figure out how to get it without going off and getting knocked off again. I got something, man. This is my uh, uh, brother off of TikTok, man. So, sure, he got a, I'm telling you, he, he, he puts it down. And and I'd rather him say it because I don't want to repeat what he says. I, uh, let me go find that link and I'll share it with you. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. And, and, and why he getting prepped, uh, uh, family? Ju I, I just look at the story here. If the law was just that great, and anything else, why bring this man to Jesus? And Jesus seeing what they did, right? But he says, I see their faith. See, yeah, you, 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 the works that you do is produced by the salvation that was already purchased by Christ. It's just the evidence of the salvation that you have. Your works don't pay for salvation. Salvation was already paid through Jesus Christ. You can't get salvation any other way. The Bible clearly states that. But these ninjas out here, and I ain't just talking about Hebrew Israelites, I'm talking about a plethora of folk. They will tell you anybody but Jesus. It have faith in everything and anything else but Jesus. That's a problem. And you as a believer, that should be a red flag. So dark red is deeper than scarlet red. No, this is burgundy. Something wrong here. And I'm not going to walk down this path because the Bible tells me differently, right? Trust the word of God. Have faith in the word of God. Do you have faith in what you read from the word of God? That's my question for you tonight. Do you have belief in what God said? Now, I can't answer that question for you. You can only answer that question that I just asked you. And I'm looking at this story very carefully. And Brother Brian is bringing his uh, his uh, computer in. But I'm looking at this. I examined this story very carefully. And I'm listening to what these other cults have told me and Brother Brian throughout the years. And specifically, we deal with the Hebrew Israelites mainly. But I'm looking at them all. And you got Islam telling you, listen, go and kiss that little nasty rock they got in Mecca. You got Jehovah Witnesses. They got a whole other, the governing body. You got the Mormons. They thinking they're going to be gods of themselves and gods of uh, their own planet, whatever. Then you got Hebrew Israelites that want to just dominate everybody and throw everybody into slavery. Bunch of heretics. And then you got your self-righteous folk. They in a whole nother category. All of them so-called self-righteous. But then you got this other, cow, the, 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 other kind of folk that tell you that God don't love you and that God ain't die for you. And they get coming up with all other kind of crazy stuff telling you to put your faith all discombobulated everywhere where God kept it simple. Place your faith in my son. Jesus told you to place your faith in him. He was very direct when he said that. We don't need no lexicon. We don't need no interlinear. We don't need no commentary. That's plain speech. But yet people are still getting confused regarding the plain speech. Now, looking at this story here. I see them bringing this man, this sick man to Jesus, not to the priest, not to the law, not to the temple. They're bringing him to Jesus. Jesus sees all the trouble that they're going through. He says, I see that I saw their faith. And it caused Christ to move on that faith. 
which displayed that grace to that man and his sins were forgiven. The same thing with the woman with the issue of blood. According to the law, she not even supposed to come in the city. She's unclean. This woman been bleeding for 12 years. Ladies, <laughs> your time in the month, excuse me, fellas, your time in the month come and those who used to have their time in the month, you pass that time every month. Now imagine that's 365 days a year, 366 on a leap year. You cramping, your back hurt, your discombobulated, your pH balance is unbalanced. You bleeding like you finna die. And here it is, the law is keeping you out because you're unclean. But this one yep. is about Christ. And she got, she done mm -hmm. been to every physician. She done probably been to the priest. She done been to the temple. She done been to the law. Mm -hmm. She done been to everything else and it could not solve her problem. She hears about this man called Jesus and what he has done. And she defies the law. And she said, if I can touch the hem of his garden, I know I'll be made whole. And what happened? She pressed her way through, through the crowd, through the law, through the Pharisees, through the Sadducees, through you self-righteous, crazy people who is trying to keep her from a healing. She said, damn with that. And she touched the hem of his garden. And Amen. guess what? Her faith touched God. Her faith touched God so much. He said, who touched me? And listen, the apostles looking at Jesus. Well, wait a minute. Listen, listen uh, 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 Brother Brian, yep. every, you got a crowd around you. Everybody bumping it. He said, no, no, yep. no. Somebody touched me. Where's that? Where's that scripture at? Uh, I can't remember exactly where it's at. Uh, the woman with the issue of blood. Yeah, let's let's look at that one. I want I want to point out some I I found in it last time I read it. Okay, let me get it. Okay. I'm gonna show you something very very powerful. My I was God. trying to get uh I was trying to get the guy who uh this video I got I text him uh I don't know uh. Yeah, I figured he might peek in the chat because uh, I'm hoping he will because this is his video that we got. Okay, Luke 8, 43. He does an outstanding job. Uh, all right, now, now look at it. Look at verse, uh, let's, let's, let's look at 43. Now a woman having a flow of blood. 12 years, bro. For 12 years. My God. Who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any. My God. Came from behind and touched the border of his garment. My God. Now this next word. And immediately her flow of blood stopped. My immediately. God. Here's something to put in mind. They love to talk about the works. They love to talk about the works. But you know what? You know what this lady did? Hmm. She touched his garment. Why? Because she believed. My God. You know, I don't got to say, I'm, I'm going to tell you. My buddy, uh, my buddy uh, Josh, I talked to him on a, uh, a good bit of basis. Do you realize, uh, I wish I could get him to tell it because I might bust loose. But uh, he told me his son got saved off this verse. Oh, wow said because she he pointed out his son now his son pointed out and immediately her flow of blood stopped not not after he touched it and she healed him no he she touched his him and was immediately healed mm. why because she believed God what's the work that they tell us to do in John 6 29 this year Oh, it, 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 listen, now I'll get it right here. John mm -hmm. 6, 29. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered them and said to them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he sent. 
That's the only work that you got to do. That's it. That's it. It, it. He tells you right here. Then they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answers them. He tells you what to do. Believe in him whom he sent. That's right. it. Check this out. Now, I'm about to show you something. Oh, you always hear these uh, different groups, I always say, the will of the Father, right? Yeah. What do they say the will of the Father is? They always try to point out law, right? I keep the law. All right, let's go and look at John 6, 40. Okay, going down. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So if uh, according to the, okay, this is how I look at things. We got to look at what they say versus what the scriptures say. Right. They could change their mind 500 different times. But you know what? I ain't got to worry about that with God because his word is everlasting. Mm -hmm. He said the will of the him who sent me. That's what he said. The will of him who sent me. That'd be the father, right? Yes. The father's will is that everyone who sees the son and believes in him may have eternal, everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. That's what he said. All right, let's play that video. He's supposed to, I don't know if it, uh, uh, he said he's, he gave me the thumbs up, so he's listening. I don't know if he's in the chat. Uh, I don't see him yet, but he's going to be listening to it. 